My name is Alyssa Ojeda, and I'm the Marketing and Public Relations Manager for Grand Canyon Conservancy, the official nonprofit partner of Grand Canyon National Park. And we work hand in hand with the park to be able to provide educational opportunities and digital programming to keep you connected to Grand Canyon. And so, and thank you to your ongoing support, we're able to share this new series, History Behind the Arts, providing you an in-depth look at the Cultural Demonstrator Program at Grand Canyon. So it's my pleasure to introduce to you today, Cultural Demonstrator Program Coordinator, Grace Lilly. Hello, thank you for joining us today. We have the pleasure of talking with Jarrell Singer, a Diné painter joining us from his home in Flagstaff. He grew up with his family in the Cameron Gray Mountain area, and I wanna thank you so much for joining us today, Jarrell. Thank you, uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, I always demonstrate up there at the Watchtower of the Grand Canyon, it's one of my favorite things to do. Jarrell, I wanted to start off um, with the fact that you've been a painter for over 10 years. Do you mind sharing just a little bit about yourself and how you got involved in art and painting? Well, first thing I did is I didn't want to be a painter. I was just, I was an engineering student here at NAU. Um, being a painter, I just fell into it. My father got sick and when I was taking care of him in the hospital, I just picked up a pencil and paper and I started drawing when I was taking care of him. So I just followed in the family footsteps of being a painter. Thanks for sharing, Jarrell. And was there anybody who inspired or influenced you to continue painting as your career? Yes, actually, it was my uncles who were all artists. And after I said, you know, I think I want to be an artist. I want to be a painter. They're like, well, you can come join us. Come paint with us. You know, that was like Bahi Whitecorn Sr. And he was always like, kind of sit down, paint with me. You can learn right here. Learn on the job is more what he said. He said, we'll sit right here. And I don't want to do that. I, didn't, I could not paint live. I could not do anything like that. And he, he made me do it all the time. Sit down right here. Grab a, grab a paintbrush. You know, paint something. <laughs> so I look up to him. I ask him questions. He, He's one of the people I aspire to be. It's nice to hear that you follow in some family footsteps. Um, and I know that you're a mixed media artist. Can you tell us a little bit about the specific materials and tools that you use in your art? Uh, yes, yeah, so the mixed media that I use mostly is, uh, most of the time I'll use spray paint, my background, or I'll use a, a wash of acrylics and a lot of pen work too. So, all that came with what pout was I wanted to do more graffiti type art, but without you know the graffiti part. So what I wanted to do was just incorporate the fine lines of spray paint and the big bold colors that they use. So that's what and I looked around, I looked at a lot of artists, seeing what they do, and you know, hanging out with artists, you don't want to be like them, you want to be different, you want to do something that they say, wow, how did you do that? Show me how you did that. And you're like, well, I want to keep it my secret. But you know, after a while, after watching them, then watching you, they're like, I know how you did that. That's so cool, but I can't do that. And just seeing other artists, working with them, it inspires you to be, take much more creativity and detail into your work. And uh, I hear you use some unique uh, backgrounds or materials for painting on. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about your skateboard art? Uh, yes, so the skateboards that I've done were here at the show and at the Museum of Northern Arizona, and now it's over in uh, Durango, Fort, Fort Collins College. And what we use is I use a lot of uh, bold colors, big, brush strokes, bright colors, and trying to get more depth into it. That's what I'm trying to do, but hopefully, I, I still want to do more. It's always changing. You see something you can improve on. It's always happening. Can't wait to see what you come up with next. Um, so I just would love to hear just a little bit about what you like to express in your work. Do you mind sharing? Yeah, so the things I like to do, I like to paint my home, uh, the areas that I grew up in around Cameron, Green Mountain, even the Grand Canyon area through the city, all along Highway 89 north of Flagstaff, all over the page. 
so all that. I like to paint the canyons. I like to paint them the dirt roads, the skies, everything in between. When you're driving past there, everybody's driving probably like 80 miles an hour. And I like to stop, hike along the area, take little reference photos, take pictures and see like how what I can capture, what I see in my childhood and what I see from 10 years ago and what I see in the future. So what I see now is always gonna be different from, from what I see or later on in my life. Well, that's really great. Um, and I hear that you grew up pretty close to Grand Canyon. Do you mind sharing just a little bit about your personal connection to Grand Canyon? Growing up near the Grand Canyon, um, um, so my mom, my dad, my grandparents, they were all farmers out there. So we had uh, a whole section of land that was near the river. Um, we would always go there every year. We would turn the land, everything, plant our corn, plant our watermelon, cantaloupe, lots of corn. That was always a great thing. And we would take care of it throughout the summer, go out there every weekend, but we couldn't go every day because we're in school. My dad had to work, my parents had to work. So every time we go out there, we collect all our you know, gatherings. And we probably plant like twice a year. And that was like one of the funnest things that you know, growing up, taking care of the plants because again, it's taking care of the land, you take care of everything, and it takes care of you too. And my family all worked at the canyon. They're all either park rangers, worked in all the curio shops. They're all doing demonstrations there too. A lot of them were dancers. They always danced out there and near the park entrances and in the Cameron area too. So growing up there, you're always up. Uh, surrounded by uh, tourists and family. So it was just a, a great way to see how we interacted with each other. Well, as um, you've had this time that you spent at Grand Canyon and your whole background of the Diné, is there anything that you're hoping to share with visitors um, so that they can understand a little bit more about your culture? Uh, yeah, so <laughs> they say the Grand Canyon celebrated its 100th anniversary. Well, as you can see, it wasn't created in 100 years. <laughs> the canyon has been there for, you know, millions of years. And what I want to show is the canyon is always changing. It's always showing you beautiful colors, beautiful landscapes. And the landscape inside the canyon is always changing due to the Colorado River. And growing up at the canyon, you always see how the uh, the light crosses over to the into the river, into the canyons, and it changes everything. That's really great. Thank you for sharing. Um, would you like to share a pivotal moment from your time as an artist, maybe when you felt like you finally made it as an artist? Um, a pivotal moment was when I was at an art show and I was approached by a uh, reporter. And that reporter wanted to interview me for the paper. And I'm like looking at myself like, me? <laughs> you got all these amazing artists around here. And you want to interview me? And, you know, that was like a turning point. I didn't expect to be interviewed for, you know, art. I just did art. Art was more like uh, something to relax my mind, to relax my soul, and to have an reporter asked me like how do you feel about your art how is everything and you know some of those questions I couldn't answer the first time because I didn't know it was just something to relax me and get out of the you know hustle and bustle of this modern world. Thanks for sharing that special moment and you know you've got a decade of experience Jarrell is there any special words of wisdom that you would like to share with other artists that are just beginning? Uh, yeah always create always do something always have a drawing pen, pencil or pen. Always sketch down your ideas. Even if it doesn't feel like it means something, it means something to you inside your mind. So when you create something and you forget about it and you look at your sketch pad like, 
a month later, a week later, even years later, you have multiple sketch pads. I probably have a stack of eyes. But <laughs> every now and then, I'll look through it, and I'll say, how, what, how did I draw that? How did I create that? So young artists always have sketch pads. Always draw your ideas out. Great suggestions, Jarrell. Kind of talking a little bit about what everybody's going through these days. Um, we've all been struggling with this pandemic, and um, I know that there has been a lot of um, times in the past that the Diné and other Native Americans have had to deal with epidemics um, in their communities. And just kind of wondering if you have a belief system that might has helped you guys through uh, during troubling times that you would like to share with others. Being an artist, we're always trying to create something new. And that's always helped me out. But growing up as a Native American at the Nah, we always had our teachings of what our father and our grandfathers taught us. So that was being traditional, being one with the land, taking care of the land, taking care of our crops, and taking care of our animals. When you take care of your uh, animals and crops, they in turn take care of you because that's also your food source. So being tied to the land we're always trying to protect it whether it be from development uh radioactive spills uh you know even dam break but one thing you got to realize is most natives are like that we try to be one with ourselves our heart and even our our crop our ground so that's that's our mother that we're taking care of we always have to take care of our mom. That's beautiful and inspirational. Thanks for sharing, Jarrell. If you have anything else you'd like to ask Alyssa? That's a good question. I'm just mesmerized by the art behind you. I mean, I would be a little bit interested to hear how your process is in terms of do you always sketch it out first and then do a smaller mock-up and then go to a bigger painting, like what's behind you? Yeah, sometimes I'll do a mock-up or a smaller painting. Uh, most of the time, it's just like free writing, you know? You'll sketch out your idea, you write out your ideas and everything, and it doesn't make sense. And then you re redo it, redo it, redo it, everything like that. Uh, sometimes I'll do it, sometimes it'll just come to me. And you just paint something, it'll just boom, see there. And especially if you're doing live art in front of an audience, you really don't have time to uh, <laughs> stop and say, Ooh, I don't want to do that. But you just keep going. The process pretty much follows hand in hand. You have your background, your foreground, upper atmosphere, lower atmosphere, just all sorts of things that are always going through my mind. Yes, sometimes I do and sometimes I don't. <laughs> Um, I guess one last thing, Jarell, we uh, got into talking a lot, but I wasn't sure if there was anything that you had to share with us, either a piece in progress or even one that you've completed recently that you would like to share. Well, most of my artwork is out in galleries right now, down okay. in uh, Coconino Community College, a part of their alumni, so they have my artwork right now, and some of it is over in uh, Durango at Fort Collins College. I have a little bit of art that's in progress, but... <laughs> <laughs> okay. Not something that I want to share right now because sometimes when you start, it, it looks muddy, fumbled, and your shapes aren't defined yet, and it looks, you know. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> fine. Um, what about the pieces behind you? Is do you want to talk about any of those at all? Uh, two of them I did. One of them is one of my good friends, and it's one of my favorite pieces. And his name is uh, Jonathan Curley, and. He, we traded paintings for that. And it, I keep it around. I love it. It always inspires me. I always see something different in it. And every time I look at it, I always want to say, wow, how did he do that? How did I do that? And it makes me think about some of these that I do. It's like he incorporates more work, more traditional stuff. And I like that. Maybe someday I'll go down that path and incorporate more traditional artwork and stories into my art. But right now, landscapes, everything else. <laughs> yeah. Well, neat. Um, is the one at the very top with some pink in it, is that more of like a thunderstorm cloud? I did that uh, live over at the Grand Canyon at, uh, at the Watchtower every three years ago. This is just a print right here. Mm -hmm. uh, it's one of my favorite pieces because when I first did it, I didn't know what I was going to paint. I was just sitting there 
staring outside the window. And at the watchtower, you can see the river flowing back there. And this one, there's also a river on the bottom. And there's this huge cloud that came in and I was just mesmerized by it. I'm like, that's what I'm painting. So I did it, sketched out in the background, the clouds and everything. And it took me about two days to complete it. It turned out amazing. Um, and that is kind of the end of the questions I have for you, but this is your chance to share anything else you'd like to with Grand Canyon visitors as um, an amazing artist as part of our cultural demonstration program. There's always changes at the Grand Canyon. They're always doing amazing new things. We just have to take care of, of what's laid out in front of us at the canyon, take care of one another, especially walking and hiking. There's also animals out there too. So we have to be careful of what we leave behind. You know, pack in, pack out everything that you need. Uh, and if you see someone in distress, you know, there's always park rangers out to help you. And there's always uh, people hiking up and down so you can ask anybody for help. So take care of the canyon, it'll take care of you. Jarrell, I know you mentioned that you have some work in some different galleries. Do you mind just going through again where people can find some of your paintings or where they might be on display? Uh, yes, so, so my artwork now is over at Coconino Community College, part of the Alumni Association. So that's here in Black Cat. And I also have some on Fort, uh, Fort Lewis or you know, Durango too. And you can find me at Facebook at Jarrell Singer and Instagram too. Jarrell, thank you so much for taking the time to share your knowledge, experiences, and skills with us today. It's an honor to have you be a part of our cultural demonstration program, and we appreciate your efforts in helping more people feel connected to Grand Canyon, its history, and its spirit. Oh, thank you, guys. I love being at Grand Canyon. It's one of my favorite uh, demonstrations I do, and I can't wait to get back out there when it opens up again. We miss having you out here, so we can't wait to tell the day we can get people back. Jarrell and Grace, this was such a pleasure. It was really great, Jarrell, to learn about you and your history and your art. And for those of you guys that are watching, Grand Canyon's Cultural Demonstrator Program is made possible with support and grants from Grand Canyon Conservancy and Art Place America. To learn more about the artisans in this program, go to grandcanyon.org forward slash demonstrators and stay tuned. We'll have more features on history behind the arts on both Grand Canyon National Park and Grand Canyon Conservancy's social media pages soon. Thank you.